Welcome friends to another r slash bro revenge video. Real pro viewers have already hit the like and subscribe buttons down below, but if you haven't hit the like and subscribe buttons, it's not too late to become a pro. That said, our first pro revenge story is by a sassy janitor. Upstairs neighbor doesn't care, so I made them care. I used to live in an old renovated farmhouse with one apartment upstairs and mine below. I would have to get up for work at 3 a.m. every day. Hardworking mom upstairs worked two jobs for her very obnoxious kids. Every time she worked an overnight shift, they would throw parties and be rowdy like all heck. Loud music, banging on the walls, and what sounded like them bouncing medicine balls on the ground. I went up several times and knocked and told them, Look, I'm not going to tell your mom or call the cops. I just want some sleep. So keep having fun, but please keep the noise down so I can wake up for work at 3. I did this several times in a week one time, and they finally told me, Go freak yourself, old man. I was 23. I knew my landlord, and he knew I knew how to work on houses, so he gave me the only key to the basement, where all the electrical, hot water heaters, etc. were stored. After being told to go freak myself, I had enough. I went downstairs, flipped off the breaker to the upstairs apartment, locked the door, and went back for a peaceful night's sleep. Woke up at 3 and turned back on the power as I left for work. Every day the parties got loud for the next two weeks. I would simply go turn off their power and enjoy a nice night's sleep. After that, no more parties. I think the message came through. If you lived in an apartment complex and you had some rowdy neighbors that were throwing loud parties late into the night and you had access to the electrical panel, would you sneak out and flip their power off every single time they were relentlessly rowdy? Or would you not want to deal with the confrontation and maybe just look for a new place to live? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Our next story is by Darking Knight, the Karen with the left-handed bag. I was working at a Tim Hortons in my youth, think 19 to 20 years old, and I prided myself on polite and courteous service. I was always cheerful and tried my best to fill orders promptly. I managed this by telling myself that even the worst customer could just be a normal person on the most terrible day of their life. I usually brighten people's days and saw many grumpy people leave happier because of me. Until the Karen came in. I was dealing with a lunch rush, which means for several hours, people stream in as if food and drink had never existed and will never exist again. So there were a lot of people to get through. A lot. So under these conditions, the Karen showed herself. She was belligerent, rude, and had a truly massive order to fill. Nothing I couldn't handle. However, she had several drinks ordered, think 8 different beverages, and she had 3 dozen donuts. Which is fine, nothing out of the ordinary, but she had to have them specifically in a certain order in the boxes, and this took time as she ordered me about. No problem, I've dealt with weirder things while working there. The line, however, was backing up while I was serving her, and her true colors were starting to show as I filled her order. Then we get to the checkout. I start to ring her up, she changes her order, third time, again, and wants to add four sandwiches. I say, ma'am, could we ring the drink and donuts through first? Until I ring you through completely, it ties up a cash register. The Karen screeches, I won't pay more taxes on my order, you won't cheat me. I stare rather dumbfounded at this logic. I tried to argue with her saying, ma'am, this won't increase your taxes, it's just faster. The Karen interrupts, no, I won't be cheated, you hear me? And I shoot a deeply apologetic glance at my coworkers who are now, regretfully, dealing with a crowd with one less cash register. Then proceed to head to the deli to make her sandwiches, as fast as I physically can, so I can get back to the counter. The Karen smugly chides and reproaches me while I make her order, telling me, you're making the sandwich wrong, and tries several times to order me about as if I were a complete idiot. As I'm finishing my second sandwich for this woman, I'm getting irritated with her attitude. I still politely inform her that I have to assemble the sandwiches in a certain order. I even have a physical chart to follow. I could get fired for not following the chart. She harumps at me while muttering under her breath about how no one respects their elders anymore and freak you and more angrily witch when I'm beginning the fourth sandwich. My sunny disposition was leaving me at this point. This woman obviously had no respect for me, thinks I'm incompetent, and doesn't care if she insults me. So impulsively, I came up with a plan as I finished up the fourth and final sandwich. Smacking my head I say, oh, I almost forgot. The Karen grumbles, forgot what? 
I say, well, we have a new promotional offer, and I almost forgot to ask you about it. You see, Tim Hortons has been doing ergonomic studies and has found that right-handed people and left-handed people hold bags differently. The Karen looks interested, so I continue. So with these findings, they designed ergonomic bags for their customers as a promotional offer. Would you like to participate? The Karen huffed at me, of course I want to participate. I give my best customer service smile and say, okay, would you like a left-handed bag or a right-handed bag? The Karen looks offended, a right-handed one of course. I say of course ma'am and duck down below the counter to quietly rummage through the completely identical bags I have. I decide to take the whole thing a step further and I pop back up with a look of pure regret on my face. I'm so sorry ma'am, we only have left-handed bags left, is that okay? The Karen's upset with this turn of events but doesn't wish to lose out on the promotion saying, ugh, fine. She says icily and grabs her order. I ring her through and watch her walk out the door with complete satisfaction in my soul. The added cherry? I heard her complaining about her left-handed bag to her friend as she walked out with her order and the confused look on the friend's face was priceless as this woman witched and moaned about this completely made up problem. I never did anything like this before or since. She was a special kind of jerk. The Karen with the left-handed bag. I kind of hope that this Karen went off and just kept complaining about it to whoever they could. Maybe even months later they're talking about, I'll never go back to Tim Hortons again or, oh my experience at Tim Hortons was so bad, could you believe they only had left-handed bags? I just hope this Karen got in so many conversations where somebody could be like, left-handed what? There's no such thing as left-handed and right-handed bags. A handle is a handle. This next story is by Original Goth Mermaid. Cheat on me? Forget about seeing your favorite bands. Title pretty much sums it up. I was with my ex for 18 months, knew him for 4 years. Found out the hard way that his reputation was correct and that he's a textbook narcissist. He cheated on me, the girl knew about me, I knew he cheated the second he turned his snap location off when we were taking space, which he used my money for bus fare. He was mentally and emotionally abusive and borderline physical some days. Intimidation was his move, punching walls and doors, throwing stuff, screaming at me, etc. During the pandemic, we'd booked a lot of gigs to go together. I say we like I didn't pay for them all. Of course, they all kept getting rescheduled. One of which is his favorite band, Enter Shikari. They were booked on his account, but with my debit card. I still want to attend said gig and, because we're completely no contact now, I was worried he'd change the address on his account, therefore meaning I'd lose the tickets and therefore 60 British pounds. I decided to email the account website to see what they could do. They asked for his info, my info, and the last few digits of my card number, and in less than 24 hours, the tickets were in my possession. The gig is completely sold out, so good luck seeing your favorite band, bubs. I've also sold the ticket I bought for him for Motionless and White, and I'm in the process of reporting tickets he took as stolen so I can have them replaced. Wouldn't it be awful if he turned up on the night to be told his ticket isn't valid? At least this way I can try and get back a little of the money he owes me. In all honesty, if your partner cheats on you, all these arrangements are completely off the table obviously, so... You're not going to go together to these concerts. These tickets OP paid for, they deserve to get refunded. So good on OP for standing up for themselves and getting their money back. And maybe dishing out a little revenge too. Our next story is by Jonesy0412. Cut in line? No food for you. I bartend at the airport. This happened last night and it felt absolutely glorious. The security line through TSA was insane. There's an employee line, but it's mixed in with the regular line. Hard to explain, but it's basically not any faster, if you will. After me and a coworker had already been waiting 25 minutes, we finally hit the front of the line. Two employees apparently thought they were more important than everyone else and cut in front of us. I was furious. I remember their faces. We have hot grab-and-go burgers and sandwiches in my store, and what we don't sell at the end of the night, we usually walk around and hand them out to employees or random people flying out. One of the line cutters came up 20 minutes after close, and we had like 30 hot sandwiches left. She asked if she could order food still, and I said we were closed. She says, what are you going to do with those sandwiches? I replied, that's up to my manager. She told me I better find out fast because her break's almost over. I was counting my till and had just finished it. I told her I couldn't ask until I finished counting my till. 
I recounted it six times until she left. Then I bagged up all the sandwiches and handed them out to every single other airport employee I could find with a smile like I was Santa Claus. Take that, you line-cutting jerk. Say it with me, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody likes a line cutter. If I was in OP's shoes and I had all these sandwiches to give out to people, time and time again, if I could avoid giving it to those people who cut in front of me in line, I know it's petty, but I'm gonna do it. Cause how dare you think you're better than somebody else and just get to skip right in front of everybody. Put the time in and wait like everybody else at your point in line. Our next story is by Jucifer Pandora Rex. You're in for it, bud. One very drunken night, my boyfriend and I get in a huge argument. He says freak off and heads up to bed, locking me out of the room. So I'm up pacing full of rage and pee. Heading to the bathroom, something on the coffee table catches my eye. His bong. Light bulb emoji, smiling face with horns emoji. The next morning, I'm making breakfast. I hear him shuffle into the living room and I bring him coffee. Due to us being pretty heavy drinkers at the time, the previous night's fight wasn't uncommon. Usually by the next day, we were over whatever it was. Today was no different. He gives me a good morning kiss and I go finish up breakfast. As I'm dishing up eggs, bacon, and hash browns, I hear the familiar click and burble of a bong hit. I freeze, recalling my petty potty from last night, a silent pause as we both hold our breath for very different reasons. He blows out the smoke, coughs, no more than usual. I hear soft, quiet mouth sounds like a sommelier sussing out the flavor profile of some wine. I slowly exhale and walk into the living room with our plates. He says, Hey, babe. I say, yes. He says, did you, uh, pee in my bong? I say, what? Babe, ew, that's gross. He's silent. I'm silent. He says, babe. I'm silent. He says, babe. I bat my eyes and say, I made breakfast. He says, babe, the freak, man. How did you even think of something like that? You're so freaking weird. He shakes his head, takes a bite of his bacon. He shoots me a sidelong glance, laughs and says, pretty freaking creative though, and kisses me on the cheek. Oh, relationships. If you don't take a hit from something that includes something from your partner such as that, is it even a relationship? All I know is I think this takes the cake for the weirdest pro-revenge story I have ever read. And our final story of the day is by Lunatunes291. Party with blasting music right outside my bedroom into the AM? Enjoy the shower. I live on the top floor of an apartment building. Last night, I had a couple friends over to watch some scary movies and hang out. As the night continues, we hear music getting louder and louder outside of my apartment. The next door neighbors were having a Halloween party on the roof and there were at least 50 to 60 people there as top 40 pounded relentlessly outside, unable to be drowned out even by the highest volume on my TV, the cheering of the crowd seemed endless. 12 AM came and went. The party showed no signs of slowing or quieting down. I'm all for parties, but have them indoors past a certain hour, don't keep the whole block up listening to Doja Cat with you. That's when I remembered the water guns. I had gotten them on Amazon during a particularly brutal hot week of summer, but they had laid unused in my closet for the past few months. The forecast did say scattered showers, and nothing got an outside party to wind down better than inclement weather. Embodying the trick, half of the trick-or-treat spirit, my three friends and I each grabbed a gun, filled it up with water, donned our coats, and ran up to the roof, squirting the guns off from two angles over the unsuspecting guests below. Cheers of fun turned into screams of terror as cold water splashed from above. As I pumped blast after blast of water off the edge of my roof, I felt like I was blasting every noisy neighbor I'd ever had that had kept me up all night with music, an all too common occurrence in New York City. We went back inside, cheeks flushed from our victory. We peeked out the window to see a few raincoats and an umbrella, but after 15 minutes or so, the party had fizzled out and the music was blessedly turned off. As I was using the bathroom a little bit later, which had a window facing their roof, I heard a loud debate echoing about whether it had been rain or someone with water guns in the neighboring roof. One person swore they'd seen figures and heard them laughing. The other two said it was rain just like the forecast said. I guess they'll never know. 
Those must be some pretty good water guns because I feel like most water guns wouldn't give you enough coverage to reasonably convince people at a party that it's raining raining. When I think of water guns, I definitely think of like jet stream, whether it's big or small, it's kind of concentrated. So being able to convince everybody that it's rain, maybe if you angle it high above, it kind of spreads out. I don't know. Pretty crafty though. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.